Welcome back to Skin by Elira, where we dive into the world of skincare and discuss tips, tricks, and recommendations to achieve your best glow yet. I'm Chinanye, your host, and today I'm joined by Dr. Brittany Carter Snell. Dr. Brittany Carter Snell is a board certified physician in both dermatology and internal medicine. As a native Detroiter, she is excited to have returned home to serve her community through the Carter Snell Skin Center. As one of the few dermatologists in the metro area fully trained in internal medicine, Dr. Carter Snell's unique approach to, sorry, there was like so much that just happened. <laughs> okay. As one of the few dermatologists in the metro area fully trained in internal medicine, Dr. Carter Snell's unique approach to patient care focuses on evaluating the person as a whole ensuring their inner health while caring for the largest part of their body, the skin. Dr. Carter Snow is a member of the, Academy, the American Academy of Dermatology, American College of Osteopathic Dermatology, Women's Dermatological Society, Skin of Color Society, National Medical Association, and she is an Alpha Kappa Alpha sorority. Dr. Carter Snell resides in Detroit, Michigan with her husband, Dr. Jamie Smell, Snell, and her daughter and son. Outside of the office, she enjoys traveling and spending quality time with her loved ones. Welcome, Dr. Brittany. Thank you, Tenoye. You're welcome. It's good to see you. You too. It's I'm been... so proud of you. Thank you. Absolutely. Thank you. And your growth has been amazing. We might what is it like seven eight years ago both starting out and can't tell you know <laughs> <laughs> you have one of the top dermatology offices in detroit i am always hearing good things i'm oh, always good. referring people good, 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 good. yeah so absolutely love what you're doing thank you I, I really appreciate the support the city has lent us yes and equally excited to be able to support other black female businesses thank you thank you so if you guys don't know, um, Elera Apothecary, our products are actually carried at Dr. Snow's Skin Center. So definitely check it out. It's always on our website. So I'm gonna just dive into the questions. I have like some pre-questions, but it'll just we'll just have conversation. You got it. Thank you. All right, so welcome to the show. And can you tell our listeners a little bit about yourself and your experience as a dermatologist? Absolutely. So as as mentioned in the bio. Um, I am just honored to be serving in my hometown. Um, we are definitely serving all age categories. So from infants to our senior citizens, it is really nothing that we aren't comfortable assisting, um, all skin types as well. So men and women, we uh, certainly seek people are lending themselves towards preventative therapies and we really like to support them in that way so starting sooner than later on some of the cosmetic treatments so that they don't have to go the surgical or invasive route has been pretty popular and we're excited that we can offer safe actualize in dermatology mm -hmm. and what do you find most fascinating about it I, the motivation came when I did my rotation. So um, just so most people are aware, when you are a medical student, you're required to do um, rotations. When you're in uh, residency, you're also required to do rotations. So I uh, signed up for a rotation at a facility and in there that there were probably going to be more often than not misdiagnosis for you know people that look like you and I. Yes. And um, when I started in appreciate color discrepancy um, easy at pattern recognition it's probably because I am a bit artsy as well so okay. when I was in high school I used to do a lot of oil painting um, drawing chalk was my was graduating from medical school is when I started applying for the residency track even okay. then I wasn't completely sold on the fact that I wanted to just do dermatology uh -huh. I said let me just go ahead and do two residencies, and that's how I ended up with internal medicine yeah. certification. Time, <laughs> take vanity to your grave because it, it might save you. It might. Okay, good. So that <laughs> that's actually very impressive that you are in internal medicine yeah. and a dermatologist. Yeah. Which I really didn't. Absolutely. And um, even when you were talking about like the, the racial discrepancies, yeah. they're diagnosed for years, 
not getting treated mm -hmm. or people are just not understanding how they're treating. That's right. It's very scary. Oh, for sure. I yeah. get patients all the time who said they thought they had eczema and it wasn't eczema. Oh, wow. Uh, and the, which is one of the reasons why I, I had to do so many rotations in dermatology. Uh -huh. I had to learn in the field what to look for. Yeah. I did not have a textbook or a journal that I could read from to get the training. So it's very important. Thank you for being in your field just because there's very few of us in that field. And mm -hmm, so to have mm -hmm. someone who's taken the time yeah. to really understand it is amazing. So thank you for that. Thank you. All right, so can you explain the importance of skin health and why it's very essential for us to take care of our skin? Yeah. You touched on that a little bit. The skin is the first line of defense. So if you allow for point of entry bacteria, virus, fungal, then that could then create a snowball effect, right? Um, the most common phenomenon we see is maybe the elderly who has um, athlete's foot. Um, people that are type two diabetics, for example, are more prone to yeast or fungal infections of the skin. Okay. That might lead to breakdown. And then subsequently, uh, things can get into the bloodstream and lead to sepsis. You and I were talking about that. Yeah. Just, and, and, and now, for no reason at all, you're hospitalized on IV antibiotics because of a condition that first started at the skin layer that then became compromised, right? Yeah. So um, those simple things of making sure that your skin barrier is always intact is, you know, step one. Um, also, not everybody. And that the darker the skin tone, you you don't need sunscreen. And sunscreen is one of the best ways you can protect yourself from getting skin cancer. Yeah. And if you don't think that you're at risk for getting skin cancer and no one is looking for the skin cancer on you, then um, that you're that individual that skin cancer might be more progressed and have a higher morbidity and mortality rate, right? Okay, so yeah. um, I, I grew up with a lovely woman. She was our neighbor across the street. She was an avid gardener. She was a beautiful mahogany, and she passed away from metastatic melanoma of the skin. And they never found the primary source. So by the time it metastasized and moved internally into her body, it had regressed itself from the skin. Oh, wow. Mm -hmm. And that all could have been prevented from skin, all could have been from prevented from sunscreen. annual full body skin examinations, sunscreen use in, in addition to protective clothing like uh -huh. sun hats and sunglasses. Okay. Um, more commonly, people and we start doing mammograms mm -hmm. or, um, you know, when, when women become sexually active, they start getting pap smears or a tool called a dermatoscope in order to evaluate pigmented lesions on the skin, mm -hmm. as well as maybe uh, red or irritated yeah. non healing lesions on the skin okay. from top to toe front to back okay and once a year is the general recommendation we do advise that once a month you're checking your own skin so that you have an awareness of something new and or changing that might be a feature of cancer okay what age does, should someone start doing that or even what lifestyle yeah absolutely so i start people as adults so after the age of 18 we're doing the full body skin exams um, and also sooner, depending on your family history. So I do have a young lady, African-American female, actually, whose um, father passed away from melanoma. Okay. And so her mother is very intentional in bringing her daughter in from teenage years to get checked. Um, because her skin exams for a couple of years had been totally healthy and benign, I then recommended that she just do every two years until she reaches adult age. Okay. So that's definitely something I need to put on my to-do list because I literally, I never heard of that before. Yeah, yeah. Wow. I, I, I do have friends that have had atypical moles uh -huh. that are considered, we no longer use the term, the old term was pre-melanoma. Okay. But yeah, if your your mole is atypical, it has the ability to advance into melanoma. So removing it um, sooner than later is it advised. Okay. So yeah. Okay, well thank and you your, for that. <laughs> yeah, insurance carriers, they pay for this. It's just a regular... Wow, that's actually very insightful. Good. So we actually just talked about some of like the misconceptions about um, people of color not mm -hmm. developing melanoma, but what are some of the other misconceptions that you often see come across your practice about skin health and skin care? 
Oh, yes. So I have people believing that they can take biotin supplements in order to treat hair loss when biotin actually doesn't help hair at all. Uh, it's more so for nail health. So I thought that it helped hair. <laughs> Worried out. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> um, I also find that um, people believe that they need to exfoliate um, their skin mechanically using um, things like exfoliating gloves on the face or exfoliating gloves on the body that actually is more harmful than beneficial, especially for skin of color. I see more often than not, people are just being very aggressive with their exfoliation. So if anything, it causes uh, chafing and irritation of the skin and unwanted hyperpigmentation. So it is safer to use more chemical exfoliants um, and they could be natural like mandelic acid or azelaic acid, sometimes retinols and retinoids if you wanna do a exfoliation for the face but really the body doesn't need to be exfoliated um, if uh, if anything the um the misconception too is just how you cleanse your body um soaps i'm sure you can have a entire podcast about <laughs> the benefits and the harms yes. of a soap the more foam does not mean you're cleaner Yes, you know. so many people want to be squeaky clean, yeah. and it's just really uh, being knowledgeable about the fact that your your skin is supposed to have some amount of oil on it, and not just totally stripped of the oil. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, um, so we talked about um, just like misconceptions and even like checking yourself yearly. Mm -hmm. What are some of the latest like technological advances that people? can use to check themselves that you're using in your practice that it can be beneficial mm -hmm. or just something that people should know about so um at home individuals can use what we refer to as the a b c d e's of melanoma so a stands for asymmetry so if you have a pigmented spot that if you draw a imaginary line down the middle of it and it does not equal up into two halves that uh -huh. should catch your attention okay. the b stands for the border of the spot anything irregular and jagged like a star or a splatter should catch your attention the c stands for color so your spots should usually be one uniform color throughout not multiple colors like light brown and dark brown and pink that's probably not good okay. uh, D is the diameter so generally your pinky tip or anything less than that is usually benign something larger than your pinky tip probably should be evaluated and then E is evolution so you never really want things changing in size shape or color on your skin okay. without you having some type of awareness of what it is and then when you come into the office, we we don't have like a cat disease okay. where we're sending pieces of the skin off to be tested, checking under a microscope and having the pathologist give us an official read on it. Okay. Um, in general, though, the um, favorite thing for me to recommend preventatively at home is actually HelioClear. It's a plant-based supplement that has not um, protection that is standalone. You still have to wear a sunscreen with it, mm -hmm. but it is so nice, especially for the summer months because everybody gets excited. We forget to reapply the sunscreen. So if you can take this supplement in the morning, it really does give you a full day of UV protection. Really? It comes from the inside, from the inside okay. and it's literally made from a green Burn and there's no side effects. Okay. Amazon has it, Walgreens has it available, and then now Carter Sound Skin Center. Uh, so uh, we are recommending it, especially for individuals that have hyperpigmentation, because um, with our skin type, especially even if you just wear sunscreen, it's still not enough to give you full protection. So I find it very helpful for even my melasma skin type patients. Okay, and can you repeat the name of it? Yes, Helio Care, H E L I O. C A R E Helio okay. Care. We will link your website on here so that people can go directly to your website yes. to, to check it out and to purchase it. You got it. Yeah, Helio Care. That's something that I need to put on my list to get to. <laughs> I didn't know uh, have that you? Have you? Have you if, and especially good for people that sunburn, regardless of if they put on a sunscreen. I do sunburn, especially like I wear glasses. 
And so my nose always gets sunburned and then my shoulders, especially when I was younger okay. and I was not applying sunscreen yeah. when I was younger yeah. and I would always get sunburned every summer. So you're one of those individuals that would benefit a lot from yeah. the supplement. Yeah. Cause even like just tan lines, all of that. Right. It's, it's really bad. Right. Right. Yeah. Right. Can't have that anymore. No. And I'm glad <laughs> I know how to prevent it, you yes. know, that and then plus using um, sunscreen on my body too. So you have one that actually has a tint to it, which is really nice. And the tinted sunscreens, you know, we used, we used to recommend it primarily because people don't like the chalky look of the mineral sunscreen. Uh -huh. Well, now we understand that the tint can actually absorb visible light, which can also trigger unwanted discoloration. So okay. now it's twofold. It oh, helps nice. make sure that it looks aesthetically pleasing on the skin, but it's also preventing any damage from visible light. Awesome. Good. Yeah. Twofold. I love that. You got it. All right. Um, my next question. So that's great for um, the latest advancements. All right. So this one, we're, we've been talking about hyperpigmentation a mm -hmm. couple of times. Mm -hmm. So many people, especially our viewers, are going to be struggling with hyperpigmentation and dark spots. Mm -hmm. Can you explain the causes and treatments for those skin concerns? Yes. Okay. So the most common form of hyperpigmentation I treat is post-inflammatory whether it be from acne or eczema or seborrheic dermatitis. So the first way you treat it is to actually treat the underlying cause, right? Mm -hmm. um, most people like to just focus on the dark spots, focus on the dark spots, but no, we gotta have some preventative treatment in there too. Um, the second common cause of hyperpigmentation I see is a melasma. This is also referred to as like the pregnancy mask, but I do see it in men, not just women. Okay. I've been very much so satisfied with a um, oral therapy called tranexamic acid. It is available uh, as a topical product some companies like skinceuticals will sell it but it's not as effective as the oral so the oral comes as a prescription it's a half a tab in the morning and half a tab at night okay. really great because melasma is one of those discolorations that really just like to come back no matter what type of sunscreen and what no matter what type of helio care supplement you take right okay. you go outside and that skin type is going to want to hyperpigment so that's definitely a, a favorite um, treatment for that form of hyperpigmentary removal. Is that going to be the same as like hair removal? Um, oh, thankfully, it's a different modality, okay. <laughs> but it's still a type of Indiag laser. Um, so for uh, hair removal for skin of color, that laser actually penetrates deeper in the skin than uh -huh. the laser that would need to penetrate for the uh, freckle removal. Okay, got mm -hmm. it. Okay, um, there was something that you said. Um, uh, it's going to come back to me. Okay. Mm -hmm. The type of hyperpigmentation. Yes. Um, is that the same thing as like hormonal, like when people have like hormonal discoloration on their face? Is that? That's correct. Okay. Melasma. Uh huh. So it's tr it can be triggered, tr uh, triggered by um, hormones of pregnancy. Okay. It can be triggered by hormones from birth control. Okay. Or it can just be triggered by a hormonal changes like menopause. Okay. So I do see it more often for women in their 50s, 60s. Oh, so when you were talking about the hyperpigmentation, mm -hmm. is that the same thing as the hormonal hyperpigmentation when someone's skin gets discolored from just like maybe they're about to start their period? or just some type of like other hormonal things that are going on with them. Right, so I do see hormonal acne uh, triggered due to uh, the onset of a, a menstrual cycle. That does result in post-inflammatory hyperpigmentation. We do have patients that are sensitive to hormonal influence and that can cause melasma. So the hormones of pregnancy, hormones of birth control, or hormones peri postmenopausal. Okay. Do these go away or is that like if you are taking the pill, they're able to, um, to stay away? or can they go away by themselves? Post-inflammatory hyperpigmentation can resolve um, on skin of color. It can take up to six to 12 months to resolve as long as the inflammation has subsided and, and, and stayed resolved. The uh, melasma, that does not go away unless it's actually treated with some type of 
a topical and or physical modality and the um, lentigenes, uh, the, 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 the freckles, if you will, mm -hmm. due to sun damage, those also don't resolve. So once it's there, it's there it's to there. stay, okay. unless again, that's treated with a laser. Okay. That makes sense. Um, what are you, okay. All right. So as we age, our skin goes through various changes. And as we're talking about something that stays with you forever, mm -hmm. what are some skincare practices for maintaining healthy useful looking skin as we get older. older. Right, the, the first thing is to actually wash the face, which is m most exposed to environmental influences, both morning and night. Okay. So I always remind people, if you brush your teeth twice a day, face needs to be washed twice, twice a day. A day. Okay. And it's mainly because when you wake up in the morning, your skin has accumulated oil and in order for things like your sunscreen that's going to be a protectant for you throughout the day to actually penetrate properly you're going to want to cleanse that off to reapply to apply for the first time the sunscreen okay so as we age our skin goes through various changes what are some key skincare practices for maintaining healthy youthful looking skin as we get older mm -hmm. the the first practice everyone should adopt is washing their face both morning and night uh, the the face gets exposed to environmental uh, pollutants so especially in the city that we live in, there's construction. So pollutants are coming off of the construction sites. Okay. Um, we are in the motor city. Pollutants are coming out of the exhaust pipe. So those things can age the skin prematurely. So you're gonna wanna wash that off okay. at the end of the day. Now, for what reason would you need to wash your skin in the morning? Our skin has accumulated oil. And if we're going to want to apply sunscreen that's gonna protect us throughout the day, we want that to actually penetrate properly. Okay. Um, so just a nice gentle cleanser in the morning is all you need. Some of my patients do well with just using warm water to rinse the skin. And that's fine too and then applying the sunscreen that can be a um, sunscreen by itself or a moisturizer sunscreen okay. um, combo okay. perfectly acceptable okay good um, other tips and tricks is making sure that you're incorporating antioxidants, whether that's topically and or orally. So vitamin C, for example, that became popularized because of the pandemic, yeah. um, but you can actually apply it as a serum onto the skin, and that's safe for even women that are pregnant and nursing. Okay. The um, vitamin C serves as a, a way to prevent what we refer to as free radical formation. Mm -hmm. So anything that can do that to the skin increases aging and it can also increase the risk for skin cancer so um, vitamin c and sunscreen would be key for the daytime okay. um, also nice for um, anti-aging and anti-cancer what we refer to as retinols so retinols you can get over the counter um, uh, common brands are different um, as well as La Roche-Posay has some retinols, and um, these are essentially vitamin A derivatives. Okay. They help to exfoliate the skin, but they can also plump, tighten, and brighten the skin. Okay. Um, you can come to me as a dermatologist. I prescribe retinoids, which are 10 times more effective. So it's nice to um, have that as a nighttime regimen after the skin has been cleansed, mm -hmm. followed by a moisturizer. Okay. So. Um, those four essentials really cleansing twice a day having a sunscreen in the morning um, a, a retinol at night and then a cherry on top would be the antioxidant okay how at what age do people start using retinol is that something that you would want to start young or older because i see so many people with acne and the acne oftentimes develops as a teenage um time frame they're already using the retinoid because that's just the staple of acne therapy okay now if someone had never um, been concerned with acne as a teenager and now they're presenting to me for the first time as an adult usually it's by my 21 and up okay the, that same population that's coming in for preventative botox got it okay so if you're asking for some injections you should definitely be using a topical retinoid every day <laughs> okay so do you because it's interesting i actually put a question on my instagram like who's done botox before yeah. and what are your thoughts about it what did they say and most people said don't do it and only wow one person this is on my personal instagram and only one person said they do it and they love it 
but I think it might be just like the fear of what Botox is and understanding it. Right. So could you just explain what it is, who should do it, who should avoid it? Right. All right. So it absolutely comes from nature. Okay. <laughs> um, even though it's called toxin, it is from the bacteria. Botulinum toxin is also something that people are familiar with with floppy baby syndrome. So the reason why you don't give your baby peanut butter because this bacteria develops within the peanut butter and you feed the baby the peanut butter, then now they're floppy because it's relaxed their muscles. Okay. So it's not a paralytic. It's just a relaxation. Uh -huh. It's not permanent at all. Okay. So the uh, companies that engineer this product, they make it available to be reconstituted and and dilute it so that it can be precisely placed exactly into the muscle and where we want to relax. So you can choose to just relax the muscles around the eyes. You can choose to just relax the muscles um, between the brows. You can choose to just relax the muscles of, on the forehead. So it's very much so customizable from the smallest amount of units to a lot of units, right? Okay. You don't have to look like Hollywood. You can just look like Holly. So okay. <laughs> um, the product I love is Dysport. It's very natural appearing. It lasts for four to six months. Um, the brand Botox is um, probably the most popular. And now Baby Tox is the thing to do so that you don't look frozen from Botox. There's um, Juvel, so many products on the market that are all botulinum toxin. Okay. So you really just need to be going to an injector that knows what they're doing. I okay. think that's where things get dangerous. Okay. So if you're going to um, someone because you got a Groupon deal, they may inject the wrong muscle yeah. and now your eyelid has dropped yeah. and you have to wait four to six months for that to wear off because there's <laughs> no reversal <laughs> agent. <laughs> okay, that's so right. four to six months and then also like go to a certified dermatologist to do it. Yes, I do respect my plastic surgeon colleagues uh -huh. um, to be able to do the injections. Okay, I plastic respect plastic my ophthalmologist colleagues to be able to do the injections. You know, certainly um, my dental colleagues, they've been able to do injections, especially for TMJ. So pain in the jawline from uh -huh. um, grinding the teeth. Okay. Mm -hmm. Oh, so, okay. So your eye doctor can do it. Your dentist can do it. Would your dentist do it like just anyone in your face or even the ophthalmologist? I would or? say that that is dependent on whoever okay. would be comfortable. <laughs> yeah, okay. exactly. Okay. That, is that typical for their particular residency training? Yeah. But uh, depending on how many years of experience they have, they might be able to do that. Okay. Mm -hmm. Wow, the more you learn. So, like, that's so interesting. I really think that um, the responses I got were really, they were definitely fear based responses. And so I didn't even follow up with like another question. Right. I was like, right. I don't, right. I didn't want to like stir anything up, but that actually, um, it's very, um, it's, it's good to hear you yeah. say that yeah. as a dermatologist, as someone who specializes also in internal medicine, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. realizing that there are benefits for people and oh, it's for not sure. a permanent. And it's, it's all about culture, right? Uh -huh. I think that um, things that we have normalized, such as chemical relaxers, we now have an understanding about how dangerous those things are, but we still do it. Yeah. <laughs> and, you know, here we are. But thankfully, this doesn't have any danger associated with the actual product. And I, I'm happy to just offer it because it's, it's actually not a... Um, revenue generator to be honest with you okay if anything i just offer it because people want it and i want them to receive it in a safe facility okay does that make sense yes it does so okay great. <laughs> so guys we now know that botox is safe and um it just depends on who you go to to get it injected you can't go to everyone what are some? So we talked a little bit about um, some skincare routines. And so just what are some other things that people can do regardless of skin con skin concern? So we talked about washing in the morning and the evening, sunscreen, 
retinol and um, an antioxidant such as vitamin C. Mm -hmm. Is there anything else that people can do to help their skin? I would say uh, body wise, we have the need to um, moisturize at least every night. Now, a lot of people have the impression that they need to just, you know, hit uh, dr the dry spots like your feet mm -hmm. and your legs. But really, if your skin is constantly moisturized, that will protect you from getting rashes, especially if you accidentally expose your skin to an irritant, okay. right? Um, just traveling, you might be surprised how sensitive your skin is to the hotel sheets. They're using laundry detergents that your skin may not regularly see. Yeah. And if your skin has not been regularly moisturized, then you could be more prone to rashes, okay. for example. Um, I do also stress the importance of hydration, um, not just topically, but ingesting your water. Uh, it is going to be getting cut outside, and you're going to be more prone to getting sunburn, especially if the skin is dehydrated, which is probably why people get sunburn on vacations more often than not, because yeah. they're eating a lot of salty foods and drinking dehydrating beverages. Yes, yeah. <laughs> and definitely not carrying around their water jugs with them. Wow, so I really, that's a great correlation between um, sunburn and being dehydrated, which makes <laughs> right. a lot of sense, yes. yeah. Oh, wow, so, okay. The next question is actually, a lot of people struggle with dry, dehydrated skin. Mm -hmm. So in addition to water, what are some tips in maintaining a well-hydrated and moisturized skin barrier? Right, so showers are actually gonna be better than baths and keeping the water temperature warm instead of hot will be very beneficial. Okay. Um, the time frame to be in the shower is 10 minutes and under. Anything longer than that is going to be more dehydrating than hydrating. Okay. And then, depending on the type of tool that you're using while you're in there, the washcloth is probably the worst thing to do. You're really going to want to use the direct bar soap onto the skin or use a loofah if you prefer a body wash. But using a washcloth over the entire body will be pretty dehydrating for most people. And habitually, our, our culture likes to use a washcloth. Yeah. So there's actually, this is funny. I was on TikTok a couple of weeks ago mm -hmm. and there was a guy, he made just like a really um, rude comment about he's not the right skin color to use a washcloth mm -hmm. and like people really went in on him in the sure, comments. Sure. And now hearing you say that we're really not supposed to use a washcloth is very interesting because essentially like a washcloth is the staple of cleanliness in our that, culture. That's right. I think that in our travels, you and I have seen when you go to Europe, for example, and you have your towels, you have a body towel, you have a hand towel, there are no washcloths. There are no washcloths, yeah. Okay. Hmm. That's actually really good to know. What about um, one thing that I used to do? I don't do it a lot anymore because I just mm -hmm. don't have time, but I mm -hmm. used to air dry my skin. Yeah what are like is that better or worse for the skin like what are your thoughts on that i actually think that's perfect because you okay. before you apply a moisturizer you are going to want to have a little dew drops on the skin uh -huh. and then you're going to lock that in with the moisturizer okay. if you dry if you wipe it off completely then you really have not added any hydration to the skin now okay. some moisturizers do have hydrating ingredients like um, hyaluronic acid or ceramides but the, especially my ex my patients I always tell them leave your skin a little damp before you put on the moisturizer okay um, in regards to air drying benefits as well that will help prevent uh, rashes in the skin folds so I have patients that present with itchiness a redness whether it be underneath the breast or uh, in the groin especially around the scrotum mm -hmm. and it's because they just really did not give themselves enough opportunity to dry Okay. And so I let them know if you don't have time to air dry, then at least take a handheld dryer and men, they can, um, you know, borrow their um, partner's <laughs> their dryer, dryer if they yeah. need to and really just get that dry before you put on your clothes. Because if you start out damp, you're going to stay damp yeah. and you're going to have risk of the yeast that normally lives on the skin over colonizing the area because it's damp and it's warm and it's dark, 
And it's a setup. That is definitely a setup for mold and everything. That's right. All right. So my last question is, many people use makeup on a daily basis. What are some tips for choosing makeup that is skin safe and compatible with different skin types? Especially right. since we've been talking about sunscreen. Right, so I, I love that they oil-free, just leave it alone. Okay. In fact, the best type of makeup is a type of mineral-based powder where it's just like sitting on the skin instead of absorbing into the skin. Okay. Um, people with sensitive skin types really need to just focus on uh, the type of makeup that maybe have more like SPF 20, maybe SPF 25, but the bare minimum is SPF 30. Okay. And the reason why is because they just don't want to make the investment to prove that their product is good enough to protect against skin cancer because it costs money okay. to do the, that research, right? So if anything, the makeup industry, they really just are um, looking to keep your skin tone even but not keep your skin protected from cancer which makes sense and please don't think that a makeup with SPF 20 plus a sunscreen with SPF 30 equals an SPF marketing and promotion and even tone okay yeah okay with the zinc yeah got it okay. you got it okay well, do you have anything that you would want to share with our guests about protecting their skin health or really just like protecting their skin in general? Oh, yeah. Um, so st one, please always see your primary care physician on an annual basis. It is important, even preventatively, even if you feel totally normal and you don't see anything to be of concern, get into an office, let someone order some baseline labs on you on an annual basis. So prevention is key. There's no need to wait until something detrimental is happening or something that you can see to get So going to be linking her website and um, social media in the bottom or in the caption. So thank you all for joining and we'll see you at the next episode. Thank you for having You're me. You're welcome, thank you. So then we're going to do the business one now. Okay. That was really good. Yeah, you got uh, good that questions. That was so informative. Oh, <laughs> yeah. good. Yeah. I never really <laughs> have a full understanding.